I want to get bigger and I'll get stronger and faster and all that stuff, but at the same time, it's like, when you realize... Veganism is a lifestyle, not a diet. But whether you went vegan for your health, the animals, the planet, or all three, what you eat plays a big role in how you look and feel. I created the vegan gym because I wanted to help vegans look and feel their best. Unfortunately, I see lots of common mistakes that vegans make when it comes to their nutrition, which prevent them from accomplishing their health and fitness goals. I want to talk about these common mistakes and give some simple, practical tips to avoid them so you can be a healthy and fit vegan and inspire others to live a healthier, more compassionate life. One of the biggest mistakes I see is people assuming that all vegan products are automatically healthy. After all, there are so many different vegan options these days, from raw food bars to vegan fast food. Vegan options are making their way onto nationwide big fast food chain menus. Surely it can't all be healthy though. Well, there is plenty of scientific evidence that proves, on average, vegan diets are healthier than non-vegan diets. The Epic Oxford study, which has studied 65,000 men and women over the last 30 years to determine the long-term effects of diet on human health, has shown us that a vegan diet is associated with around a 50% reduction in risk of high blood pressure, significantly lower levels of blood cholesterol, a 25-30% to 30 reduction in ischemic heart disease, a 19% reduction in cancer risk, and a 30-40% to 40 reduction in the risk of type 2 diabetes. But even though vegan diets are healthier on average, doesn't mean that vegan food is automatically healthy. Generally speaking, the more you stick with whole plant foods instead of processed vegan products, the more nutrients you will consume and the healthier your diet will be. My general recommendation is that you consume at least 80% of your daily calorie intake from whole plant foods. This can include everything from raw fruits and salads to cooked rice, hearty soups, curry, oatmeal, sushi, and way more. The term whole plant foods simply means that you're consuming plants in as close to their natural form as possible, but cooking and flavoring as needed. You're welcome to spend the remaining 20% of your daily calories on processed foods like vegan meats, dairy products, snacks, and sweets. While processed vegan foods are less healthy, and you should be especially mindful of their saturated fat and sodium content, they still don't contain most of the unhealthy compounds found in animal foods like cholesterol, trans fatty acids, heme iron, hormones, and antibiotics. All of these harmful compounds increase your risk of cancer, Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, and heart disease, which is the number one cause of death in the United States. I wouldn't recommend somebody eat 100% whole foods all the time in a lot of cases because for one thing, you're gonna feel like you're denying yourself a lot of the uh, comforts of living in a modern society with lots of delicious things to try out and experience. And on the other side of that, it actually might make your fitness goals harder, especially if you're in the case of you wanna gain weight or you wanna gain muscle. Um, that's gonna make it really, really difficult for you in a lot of cases because your stomach only has so much capacity and you're only gonna be able to fit so many veggies in there um, that might not be so calorie dense. So having some flexibility with your diet is really important because I don't know anybody who can stay on a meal plan for 365 days or beyond that. You know what I mean? I think even that would be a really, really serious accomplishment. I think what makes meal plans or, or nutrition plans rather work for you in the long run is having the flexibility to eat kind of how you want to and where your preferences lie, but also has the rigidity and the, the metrics that are in place to keep you adherent to a set of scientific principles that are proven to advance you in your goal. The second mistake that I see a lot is when vegans consume too few or too many calories. One thing that has frustrated me over my years of being vegan is seeing many people who try veganism revert back to eating animal products, claiming that they felt tired or had low energy. Of course, sleep and stress play a pivotal role in your energy levels, so it's important to sleep well and manage your stress. 
But if sleep quality and stress levels are unchanged, then the likely reason these individuals feel tired following a plant-based diet is because they are consuming too few calories. Calories are your body's main source of energy. If you don't consume enough calories, then you're not going to have energy. Generally speaking, the caloric density of plant foods is lower than that of animal products, so you need to eat more volume to get the same number of calories. For example, vegetables average 150 calories per pound, fruit averages 250 calories per pound, whole grains average 500 calories per pound, and beans and legumes average 600 calories per pound, while meat and dairy products average 800 to 1500 calories per pound, depending on the product. If you are having trouble eating enough calories to maintain your body weight and energy levels, focus on increasing your intake of wholesome higher calorie plant foods like beans and legumes, potatoes, nuts and seeds, avocado, and dried fruits. On the flip side, there is a general misconception that going vegan is a good way to lose weight. Eating more plants generally does help people lose weight, but depending on what you eat, it can be just as easy to gain weight eating plants as it is with animals products. If you are consuming more calories than you burn every day, even if you are eating lots of fruits and vegetables, then you will gain weight regardless of what foods you are consuming. If you are transitioning to veganism, I would recommend that you track your calorie intake for a few weeks to make sure that you are eating about as many calories as you burn every day. This is called caloric maintenance and that's a good place to be as you give your body time to adjust to new foods and a new way of eating. Then, if you're feeling pretty good and having plenty of energy a few weeks into being vegan, you can stick around with caloric maintenance if you like how you look and feel, or you can lower your calories to burn fat or raise your calories to build lean muscle in combination with resistance training. It is extremely important to make sure that we're giving ourselves enough caloric intake to uh, perform as people uh, for the type of expenditure, which is very different for many of us, but if we're not getting the, the nutrients our bodies need, we're not gonna have the energy uh, to, to do life and to perform well. So our food is, is literally, it burns, it, it is fuel. So if we're not getting enough of it, it's like a car and you run out and you're just running on fumes and you're going really slow and you're just kind of going through the motions. You're not going to sleep as well if you're not getting enough fuel. Your body's truly trying to fight for you. And if you're not giving it what it needs, it's not going to be able to fight. Uh, we can we can burn from both ends. So if we're not, we're not getting enough in, uh, we're just not going to be able to perform in the way we want to. The third mistake that I see vegans make is believing that clean eating will build your dream body. During my first year as a vegan, I felt amazing, but I really struggled to lose fat and get fit. Many vegans, myself included when I first got started, tend to think that you can just eat clean to build your dream body while consuming all of your calories from healthy, nutritious foods. Now there is a degree of truth to this since healthy, nutritious foods support the development of a healthy, lean physique. But there's more to consider than eating plenty of fruits and veggies. Specifically, there are two primary nutritional drivers behind building your dream body. Number one is your calorie intake, and number two is your protein intake. If you eat more calories than you burn, you will gain weight. If you eat fewer calories than you burn, you will lose weight. It is really that simple. And energy is just another word for calories, so your body's energy balance is the balance of calories consumed through eating and drinking compared to the calories burned through your metabolism and physical activity. If you burn 2,000 calories per day, but somehow manage to eat 3,000 calories per day of raw fruits and vegetables, then you are going to gain weight. However, if you burn 2,000 calories per day and only eat 1,600 calories per day of junk food, then you are going to lose weight. Beyond calories, protein is the most important nutritional driver behind building your dream body. If you want to improve your fitness in any way, whether you want to build lean muscle, burn body fat, gain strength, improve your endurance, or anything else, then you need to eat enough protein to support your fitness goals. 
If you want to lose weight, then you will need protein to help you maintain your muscle mass and push your body to burn body fat. If you want to build muscle, then you need protein to support the muscle building process. Without protein, your body cannot build muscle. Keep in mind that you will only build muscle and strength by combining protein with resistance training. Whether you are lifting weights in the gym, doing bodyweight exercises at home, using resistance bands, throwing around sandbags, or whatever else, it is important to perform some type of resistance training to build muscle. Because your calorie intake and protein intake matter so much, clean eating is not the solution to building the body of your dreams. However, eating most of your calories from healthy, nutritious foods is important for your health. The fourth mistake that I see lots of vegans make is not eating enough protein. As I came to the end of my list in my research, I knew that I would have to talk about plant protein. According to the US and Canadian dietary reference intakes, the recommended daily allowance for protein is 0.36 grams per pound of body weight, which is 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight per day for healthy adults. This amount is defined as, quote, the average daily intake that is sufficient to meet the nutrient requirement of nearly all healthy adults. This means that as a bare minimum, a 180 pound person only needs about 65 grams of plant protein per day. As long as you are eating enough calories, this recommendation is extremely easy to meet. However, many decades of research and anecdotal evidence prove active people, particularly those who engage in resistance training regularly, need more protein than the average person. A large body of evidence suggests that a low-fat, high-protein diet increases fat loss, preserves lean body mass, and maintains your metabolism. Your exact protein target depends on the intensity, duration, and frequency of your training program. Here are my general guidelines for target protein intake. If you exercise for less than 3 hours per week, then you should aim to consume 0.6 grams of protein per pound of lean body mass per day. If you exercise between 3 to 6 hours per week, then you should aim to consume 0.8 grams of protein per pound of lean body mass per day. And if you exercise for more than 6 hours per week, then you should aim to consume 1.0 grams of protein per pound of lean body mass per day. If you choose to follow these protein intake recommendations, only total your active minutes spent exercising. This does not include time spent warming up or resting. Now your lean body mass is everything in your body that isn't body fat. To calculate your lean body mass, you should multiply your body weight by 1 minus your body fat percentage in decimal form. My body weight is 194 pounds and my body fat percentage is approximately 15%. So my lean body mass would be 194 pounds times 1 minus 0.15 or 194 times 0.85 which is 164.9 pounds. If I exercise between 3 to 6 hours per week, then I would multiply my lean body mass of 164.9 pounds by 0.8 grams of protein per pound of lean body mass to get a daily target protein intake of 132 grams. If you are not sure what your body fat percentage is, then you can estimate your body fat percentage to a moderate level of accuracy by comparing your physique to pictures that you can easily find online. Simply visit Google and search for male or female body fat percentage pictures. Now the fifth most common mistake that I see vegans make is overlooking supplementation. To wrap up my list, I want to end on an often overlooked component of a healthy vegan diet. Although a wholesome plant-based diet has been proven to be the healthiest diet in the world, most vegans would benefit from taking certain supplements. Now this does not in any way make a vegan diet inferior to an omnivorous diet. Most omnivores would benefit from taking these supplements as well. So arguably the most important supplement for vegans to take is vitamin B12. Contrary to popular belief, vitamin B12 is not made by animals, nor is it made by plants. Vitamin B12 is made by microbes that blanket the earth, and all vegans should supplement with it in their diets. 
Dr. Michael Greger, one of the world's leading experts in nutrition, recommends consuming at least 2,000 micrograms of cyanocobalamin, vitamin B12, once each week, ideally as a chewable, sublingual, or liquid supplement taken on an empty stomach. You can also consume vitamin B12 fortified foods like nutritional yeast, but there is no defined upper limit intake of vitamin B12, so many experts advise that you err on the higher side of intake. Next are the omega-3 fatty acids. The three omega-3 fatty acids are ALA, alpha-linolenic acid, EPA, eicosapentaenoic acid, and DHA, docosahexaenoic acid. All three are critical to your health and especially vital for your brain and eye health. Vegans cannot easily obtain any direct sources of EPA or DHA without supplementation, but we can convert ALA from plant foods like flax seeds, chia seeds, and walnuts into EPA and DHA. However, these conversion rates are quite low and likely not enough for optimal health. So while you can probably convert enough ALA to EPA and DHA for survival, nutrition authorities recommend an additional 250 milligrams a day of preformed EPA and DHA. The word preformed simply means that it comes in the actual form of EPA and DHA, not in the converted form from ALA. So in addition to consuming ALA from whole plant foods like chia seeds and flaxseed, we should all aim to consume 250 milligrams of preformed EPA and DHA every day, which can be obtained from algae oil in supplement form. Thankfully, algae-based supplements don't contain all of the toxic contaminants that fish oil supplements do, so there's no need to worry about supplementing with omega-3 fatty acids. So I come from a Nordic heritage and have fair skin, so my next supplement recommendation definitely hits home. Vitamin D is a nutrient that your body needs for building healthy bones and regulating many other cellular functions in your body. Now you can get enough vitamin D with sensible sun exposure, but the only catch here is that you should have your arms and legs exposed to soak up the sun, which can be a challenge during the winter months if you are living in a cold climate. Aim for 15 to 30 minutes of midday sun, 15 for those with lighter skin, and 30 for those with darker skin. If you don't get adequate sun exposure, which is especially common for many people during the winter, you should aim to consume 2,000 international units of vitamin D in supplement form every day, ideally with your largest meal. Similarly to vitamin D, your body needs calcium to build and maintain healthy bones. Instead of taking a calcium supplement, aim to consume at least 600 milligrams of calcium daily through calcium-rich plant foods. Stick with low oxalate dark leafy vegetables, which includes all greens except spinach, chard, and beet greens. Oxalates are a type of compound naturally found in a variety of plant foods that inhibit the absorption of calcium. To finish out our micronutrient considerations, I wanted to make a note of iodine, iron, and selenium. To make sure that you are getting enough iodine, I recommend eating seaweed as a snack or in Asian dishes like miso soup or vegan sushi. If you don't like seaweed and don't use iodized salt, then you can take a 150 microgram daily iodine supplement. To make sure that you are getting enough iron, you should aim to combine foods rich in iron, such as tofu, edamame, soy nuts, and dark green vegetables with foods rich in vitamin C to increase your absorption. To make sure that you are getting enough selenium, I recommend eating a daily Brazil nut or you can consider taking a supplement if you don't consume enough dietary sources of selenium. Now I realize that all of this can seem like a lot, especially for newer vegans, but with a little effort and time, you can avoid all of these mistakes and become a healthy, fit vegan. Then your example can inspire others to choose a healthier, more compassionate lifestyle, and we can all do our part to save the animals and our planet. I hope you have some valuable takeaways from this video that will help you to live a happier and healthier life. Until next time, keep challenging the status quo.